Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. Can I get just a show of hands of uh, how many people were here last year? Oh, phenomenal. Okay, that makes me very happy. I want to talk to you after, uh, after this summit so you guys can tell me what you think. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, telling you a typical Silicon Valley story. In 2004, I graduated with my Master's of Fine Arts in painting. And I thought I was going to be a painter for the rest of my life. Here are some of my works. And I taught at the San Francisco Art Institute. I exhibited my work around the world. And I was successful as an artist. And successful means you can pay your bills. Uh, and, and you can support your habit, is pretty much being successful. But I did live in Silicon Valley and uh, in San Francisco, and I had a disruption in my life that caused me to rethink what I was doing. Um, I have three kids, and I had to support them, and being a painter and a teacher was not gonna do it. So I decided to go out into the world, open myself up, and try to get a new job, a new career. And I was looking at museums, I was looking at places where I thought my talents would fit in, but uh, as you can imagine, it was, it was pretty daunting, especially, again, living in Silicon Valley where everyone is always talking about tech. A good friend of mine sent me this email, and it, all it said was, she, it was on a, it was on a, a working mom site, and all it said was, uh, nonprofit based in San Francisco, looking for an event planner, please apply. That was it. And it was a Gmail address. It wasn't even like I could figure out what this nonprofit was. So I just sent my resume. OK. I get a call an hour later from a woman named Julia. And mind you, this is about 2011. And she says, hi, you know, I got your resume. I'd really like to talk to you about this position at, at our nonprofit. And I was like, OK. She goes, can I ask you some questions before I, uh, I, before I tell you about who we are? I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, have you ever heard of PayPal? I said, no. Mind you, I'm an artist. I'm not using PayPal. She said, OK, OK. Uh, have you ever heard of Facebook? No, sorry, never heard of Facebook. OK, all right. Um, well, have you ever heard of Peter Thiel? And I was like, no. Now, for, for those of you, especially at the time, Peter Thiel is one of the unicorns of Silicon Valley. He's the founder of PayPal. He was the first one to invest in Facebook. And that's really how he made his money. And pretty much every venture capital firm that he, that he is part of, which is about five or six, have invested in every company, big company you've heard of, Airbnb, Uber, you know, all those big companies. So mind you, this was my technology at the time, okay? This is what I was using when I was teaching. And I still love the sound that it makes, and it's, there's something really, you know, if I could, I'd use it here, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, but this is it, this, is, this, is my, this was my technology. She said, okay, you know, she goes through and tells me who Peter Thiel is, what he does, what's, what they're doing, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, why is this woman wasting her time talking to me? Like, really, like, what, what can I possibly give her? So she goes, do you want to come in and uh, apply for the position? And I was like, what, what, you know, do you want to interview? And I said, what position? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do? She goes, we want you to be creative. That's what we want you to do. So I went in, I interviewed with their team, which was about five people. Peter walks in, I talked to him for about five minutes, he leaves. And as I was walking out the door, they literally offered me the job. For, to be part of the Teal Fellowship um, and part of his foundation, which was called the Teal Foundation. And the Teal Fellowship was a, and still is, uh, a program where they would give 20 young adults under the age of 20 years old a $100,000 scholarship or fellowship uh, to follow their dream, to follow their, what they want to do. And, but the only caveat was that you could not go to college. You had to stop out, not drop out, but you had to leave and only focus on what you, your dream, what you wanted to do. 
And while the $100,000 is a lot of money, it, what was more beneficial were all the connections that the fellowship had. So here I am, and all of a sudden, I'm literally working for the unicorn of Silicon Valley, which happens all the time. This is like just, my story is one of a thousand. No. Um, and I was hired to be creative. That is what he wanted to put a team together that was outside of the box. He wanted to put it, he knew what he was doing here was going to cause a lot of problems. But what he wanted to do was start a conversation about education in the United States. Uh, there's $1.3 trillion of student debt right now. This is what our, the next, this is what our generation is holding, $1.3 trillion in debt. And what does that do to a person holding that kind of debt? And so this is the conversation he wanted to start, and this is what I kind of walked into. At the same time, he was writing his book, Zero to One, that I highly, highly recommend. Uh, and it was another amazing experience for me to be there while he was writing this book because we were all having conversations. I actually got to read drafts of the book before it came out. Um, and of course, in the office, we were all talking about it. Uh, and it was, it was really wonderful. And to summarize what this uh, book is about, is doing what we already know how to do takes the world from one to n, adding more of something familiar. But every time we create something new, we go from zero to one. The act of creation is singular, as is the moment of creation, and the result is something fresh and strange. I love this quote from the book. I absolutely love it, because once again, the words that pop out for me is the word creation, and obviously fresh and strange. That is how I believe we should start looking at our future. Creation for me, I, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Something that you heard, um, my, my new Peter, Peter Diamantis, <laughs> talk about in his video is that one of the pillars of Singularity University is to try to help people uh, get an abundant mindset. In my opinion, I think a subcategory of having an abundant mindset is to have a creative mindset, to go out there and to try to think differently, to try to look at the world differently, and start surrounding yourself with people who do that, because that is where you're going to get those fresh and strange ideas. So being an artist, and this is still part of my life, and still the way I see the world, I wanted to kind of go through this concept of zero to one, but through art history. So we're gonna take a fun quiz, and this only works if people shout out and, and answer my questions, and let's see if this works. Does anybody know who this painter is? I didn't hear. No, okay. <laughs> You actually said a name. Okay, how about this one? No. The first one is Solomon J. Solomon, and his, this painting uh, is called Samson. The next one is Bouguereau. These two men were the most famous artists during the 1800s in Europe. Absolutely the most famous artists. They, um, uh, Solomon J. Solomon got the recognition of almost uh, a Nobel Prize in art. That is how good he was. They were adored. Their paintings sold like hotcakes. It was, they were just the talk of the town, okay? They were the shit. That's what they were. Who's this? Van Gogh, we all know. We all know this is Starry Night, Van Gogh. Who's this? It doesn't work unless you yell out at me. <laughs> exactly. So we know that this is Monet water lilies. These two men were painting at exactly the same time as Bouguereau and Solomon J. Solomon. Exactly at the same time. And yet, who do you know? Who do you see? Who do you, who have you seen in the, in the museums? These guys. This is zero to one. The other ones, 
Not so much. I love this quote about, from Van Gogh. Instead of trying to reproduce exactly what I see before me, I make more arbitrary uses of color to express myself more forcefully. To me, that's an artist's way of saying zero to one. You can actually see here Solomon J. Solomon looking at a painting that was painted centuries earlier by Van Dyke and looking at it and going, all right, I'm looking at this and I'm going to try to make it better. And that's just an innovator. That's just taking one tiny step forward and maybe not even that. Now, Solomon J. Solomon was 26 when he painted this painting, so you have to give him kudos. Like, that is incredibly impressive. But the bottom line is, these guys are the ones who change the way we look at art. And there's so many of these examples through art history. And my point in telling you the story and these examples is to show you that this has been going on for centuries in all different fields, not just technology, not just the Industrial Revolution. It, this is not just the Bronze Age. This has been happening in totally other ways. And because of these two painters and the Impressionists, we completely see the world differently. But nobody liked it at the time, and nobody understood it at the time, and everyone thought they were fresh and strange. They were strange. But what I'm telling you is think about the fresh and strange. I work at SU headquarters, and for me, Singularity University can be the facilitator for all of you to kind of move forward and think about the abundant mindset, and I think more so the creative mindset. We are at the intersection of technology, impact, and business, and what I've been asked is, okay, what do I do next? Where can I go? What can I do? How can I, be, how, can I, how can I embrace all of this? And unfortunately, I cannot give you the yellow brick road path to abundance. But what I can give you is an amazing community. We have summits all around the world. Uh, this year, we have 14. Next year, almost 20. We will have another one here in Mexico, if not two. Uh, talk to Vivian. <laughs> and. Uh, and we are going to be offering more programs here in Mexico. We also have global alumni all around the world. And now that you're here, you are part of that group, part of the alumni, uh, representing 110 countries. These are all people like you who want a better future, like Lisa was talking about. I want to end with a, uh, a story that happened when I was in uh, South Africa. So we had a summit there two weeks ago. And a whole group of us went on safari, which was like, you know, once in a lifetime experience. And uh, we go out onto this, onto that, you know, I wish I had a, a picture of it, but we go out on one of those, you know, you've seen safaris, those open trucks, and we go out and there's six of us in the truck and we just see a lion literally walking past us. And two minutes later, it literally starts pouring hail, like golf balls. And it was hailing so hard. We took the blankets, we started covering ourselves, but I, I was actually covered in dots from bruises from this hail that was coming down. The, the driver stopped the truck because we, he couldn't see anything in front of him. We were all kind of, we were freaking out. We're like, oh my God, not only that, we can't run out of the truck because we just saw a lion. So we're kind of stuck in the truck, okay? Like, we don't know where that lion is. And we were out there for an hour in this hail. We got back to the lodge, and to tell you how hard this hail was falling, they had uh, glass tables on the outside in the patio. All the glass was broken. And we got back, and we were just, on a high almost, like we had all survived something together. And we all, we all dried off, we sat around the dinner table, and for a solid three hours, we talked about what had just happened to us. And I, I kind of sat back a little bit, listening to everyone talking about what this experience that they just had, thinking, we all just experienced the same thing. Why are we talking about it for another three hours? Like, why do we do this? Why do human beings kind of go through some kind of an experience and then 
talk about it and keep talking about it and remembering it. And even a year later, like, oh, remember when we almost died in the safari with the lion? Now, you know, the story gets bigger. So what I want to leave, the idea I want to leave for you is talk about it. When you're out there having a break, having coffee, having lunch, talk about what you hear here. Talk about the problems that you're having, and maybe someone here can help you find a solution. Talk about the ideas that have been popping in your head that kind of sound fresh and strange, but sharing it with someone else and talking, talking it through can definitely maybe, maybe spark some kind of an idea. So I want to leave you with that thought. Be the rhino on the tightrope. Make or follow something that is fresh and strange. And let's embrace the future and make it our own. Thank you very much. I am very much looking forward to speaking to all of you during the breaks. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you all for coming.